some questions or if you have ideas. <laughs>
with We're done with that one. It's not connected yet. Connecting it is hard. How do you connect it? You taped it? You taped it? I guess it is. So we have to change it. Yeah. 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 Well, it looks like to me. Yep. Well, do you know what where we're at in the book? Or we can do something different. Let's do what this do. Okay, so you're gonna slide this one over there. So this one plus five volt in plus Stacey reporting for Scorp TV. Today I'm giving you a sneak peek at Mark Hale and Nate Haggins' team project. They research micro deck chronology, which is a study of Rocky Mountain Bristle Cone Pine Phase 3. This is just a taste of what you are going to see at the Regional Science Fair. Hi, I'm Mark Heil, and dendrochronology is the study of tree ring dating. Hi, I'm Nate Hagen, and this is phase three of our project, and we're studying the effects of carbon dioxide on tree ring dating. District Fair is a competition here at San Juan College, and it's everybody that's competing in the San Juan Basin for who gets to go to state. And then there will be two competitors for internationals and two people that are alternates. Regionals 
is a oh. regionals is a fair at San Juan College of the competitors in the San Juan Basin and they'll be competing for state qualifications and to go to internationals this year in Tucson which will be May 6th through the 10th and there'll be two qualifiers to to compete and two to go as alternates. who both qualified for International Science Fair in Hamilton, Ontario. They will be traveling to Socorro tomorrow for the state competition. What do you guys know about international competition? Well, um, the international competition is a lot bigger than either state or the regional competition. Um, there's over a thousand competitors and they come from all the territories in the United States and over 30 countries. Um, I know that to be a judge you have to have either an MD or a PhD and there's over 1,100 judges at that fair. Okay. Diane, what is your project's name? My project is entitled The Effects of UV Light on the Chlorophyll and MAAs of Isocrisis Galvana. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about it. Well, basically what I was doing was I was measuring the effects of UV light on phytoplankton and seeing how it affected their chlorophyll and their growth and these possible pigments that they have that could act as sunscreens. Okay, and what did you name your project? Um, the title of my project is Too Many People Did Overpopulation of Chaco Canyon Cause the Decline of Anasazi Civilization? And in a nutshell, basically I was seeing if the population at Chaco Canyon, all the Anasazi people, had um, ruined their environment and eventually brought the decline of their civilization upon themselves. Anne and Diane qualified for nationals at Regional Science Fair, which was at San Juan College. How many people qualified for nationals? Well, we're the only two competitors. There's two competitors, and then there's a team project that's going, and also um, there's another observer and who's a, at this high school, and then there's a junior observer from a junior high. What do you two feel that made your project shine through to the judges? Well, um, basically, I think the most important thing about your project is that when you find an idea and you like it, you have to present that to your judges. And um, the presentation itself, you know, the way you can convey your ideas or, or the way you speak to the judges, I think is what made the biggest difference for me. I think probably mine is I have a lot of graphs on my board, and that makes a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, congratulations to both of you, and thank you for being with us today. Biology is fun and exciting and has a lot of different subjects such as biomes, animal and human life, habitats and cell cells and organisms. The labs in biology are fun and interesting. Today Ms. Byers class are, is doing a lab in, on biomes. They are working inside and outside on this lab. When you do a lab you have to use your lab notebooks and be sure you record everything that happens in your lab. When you do labs you have to com communicate with your group and listen to each other's opinions. Everyone should sign up for biology because it is the funnest part of science. I don't know flyers because there's not that much written work. It's a fun and exciting class. Uh, this has been Don for short time. I'm checking out Miss Al's Physical Science Class. They're in the midst of doing a lab involving levers. So I'm here to show you what a typical day like is like in Miss Al's Science Class. So enjoy the funner side of science. Science isn't always work. 
As you can see, labs can make science more interesting and more fun. Today, Miss Howe's physical science class is performing a lab involving levers. After they do the experiment and record the data, students have to do the writing part of this lab. That involves answering analysis questions and writing a conclusion. In Miss Howe's physical science class, there is no pattern or schedule for labs. Each chapter has a different number of labs. We wondered if students liked these labs and what lab was their favorite. So we asked two students those very same questions. The funnest lab I've done all year would probably have to be kitchen chemicals because you get to mix a lot of chemicals and see the reaction. Miss Howe's class is fun because she explains things to us about science and we have the ability to understand it when she explains it. As you can see, science can be fun. Hands-on labs help the students to understand more about their topics. And when they understand more about their topics, the class is fun and easier. So if you're not getting much out of your science class, take advantage of hands-on labs to make the class more fun. This has been Brandon with Scorp TV.